Hi, I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. And before you watch this video, make sure you hit subscribe so you can be notified for future videos and future content that we're going to do here. And if you have any questions, put it in the comment section and I'll try to get to all the comments. So today I'm standing next to a LC500 convertible and the question is, does it still have what it takes in 2023? And I'm gonna tell you a few reasons why you need to buy one even for the future. So let's get into it. The LC500 has a gorgeous front end with a really modern concept type vibe. It actually looks very similar to the concept. Sometimes when you see pictures of these online, people do think it's a concept. And a big reason why is even how the headlights look. So we have a daytime running light here that runs into the actual housing of the headlight. I haven't seen that in any other cars, definitely no other cars in the Lexus lineup. Uh, and when that's illuminated, it illuminates all the way into that housing, which houses a triple beam LED headlight stack. And there's some nice little artwork as well. You can see sort of the little Lexus signature squiggle uh, inside that housing, as well as the Lexus emblem. But when you look at the whole grill, kind of zoomed out, you notice they've really spread out that lighting system. So we have the signals and four ways down here, that daytime running light, and then the, the actual housing of the triple beam. And it makes it look very wide, and it is a very wide car to begin with, but when that stuff's illuminated, you can really see how, you know, it's like a, a wide, wet, like wedge shape vehicle uh, with the spindle grill, which is really nice. When you look closely at the spindle grill, it looks like it took a mathematician to be able to engineer how that grill flows. And what I mean by that is the spacing at the top condenses into the middle and then spreads out at the bottom. And the reason I really like that is it sort of hides the fact that there is a bar behind this section here for, for you know, I'm sure crash test and safety and all that stuff. There has to be some support there. And the way that they have the spacing is it really blends that in. So it does, uh, it does you know, serve a little bit of purpose for sure. Uh, then we have the normal Lexus emblem. It does have a lot of chrome on this front grille as well, but for some reason for me, it suits the car. I'm not a big chrome guy, but especially in the white, it does look very classy and elegant. And I think, I think they did a good job there. Uh, now panning over to this side, the first thing you'll notice is how big the wheels are. And they're absolutely amazing. So we have a 21 inch alloy wheel. Uh, and the fact that it's like a, a two-tone chrome and black design really shows off when you get close to it, the dish of the wheel, which I really like. And we have a matching black brake caliper uh, that you can tell is very big with a massive rotor as well uh, to be able to stop all that power of the naturally aspirated V8 engine producing around 470 horsepower to the 10 speed transmission. Uh, that's why those brakes are there. Is, uh, it's not a ton of power, but it's enough that you wanna stop, especially in a car as heavy as this one. Let's take a look at the side profile. So as we flow to the side, we have, instead of chrome here, we have black, which pairs nicely with the, to the tops of the mirrors, as well as, you know, the strips of, uh, beside the windshield and, you know, the little decorations all over the place. And there is some venting here as well. We have some venting on the side. And the, when you notice the venting and you're looking at the LC, one of the things I always look at is that's kind of where I notice how wide it gets. It almost gets wider at the back, especially in the convertible. And that vent kind of, you know, shows that or, or, or starts to accentuate that a little bit, which is pretty cool. Uh, and, you know, right above that vent is the flush door handle. Uh, so when you lock it or when it sits, that'll go back into the body. And if you try to, when the key's in it, it'll beep at you like it's doing right now. Uh, but when you unlock it, it'll pop out. Uh, and it's just it's just a cool modern take on, on handles. I think more cars should have that. I would be happy if the whole Lexus lineup had that, to be honest, but I'm not in charge of that. So anyway, um, as we go to the back of the vehicle, you'll see how big that back end is, especially in the convertible. It just looks like there's so much presence there and there really is. It's got that, you know, boxer, boat tail look, 
and it still has some nice body lines too. So we have some edges kind of flowing from the front to the back here and actually continuing even from the side. Uh, and then one again here that starts at the, the tail light and actually disappears to the side of the vehicle, which is, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, and that brings us to the back. On the back of the LC, hands down, the best part of the car is the taillights. So I'm gonna turn those on for you. The taillights are supposed to be like an afterburner. So what Lexus wanted to do was have some dimension there, make it seem like a fighter jet, and the result is amazing. When you're behind one of these at a stoplight, for instance, or a couple cars back, seeing that taillight and seeing the different layers to it looks like magic. How they did it, I think there's some mirrors in there. I think it's, it is magic probably, uh, but the result is amazing. And again, it makes it modern. I don't know how that's gonna weather over the next 10, 15 years, but for right now, it makes it look super up-to-date and modern, which is surprising because this car was designed, you know, probably in the mid-teens. I mean, it was released in 2018, so that design probably went, you know, previous years to that even. So it does seem relevant in today's age. Now, speaking of relevance and the future, an important part about the industry right now. So a lot of things are going hybrid and plug-in obviously. And because of that, what you notice as you're driving around, more and more cars don't have tailpipe showing anymore. And they're more integrated under the car or under the bumper. And you'll see the LC, kind of has that as well. Now there is a tailpipe there. If you get if you get low enough, you can see tailpipes down there. But for the most part, all you see is kind of the decoration and the openings where the taillights are. And what I the question that I pose when I look at this is if you're going to have the LC for 10, 15 years, which let's be honest, the car will definitely outlast that. When you're driving it around, is it gonna look out of place? Is it gonna look ancient? Because it's got like tailpipes sticking out, I don't know. I don't know what people are gonna think or what's gonna be in style then. But for right now, the fact that it's kind of flush mounted and a little bit hidden, to me makes me think that it will fit in. Uh, and if you don't like that, I have changed them. Uh, there's a company called Artisan Spirits that we've teamed up with before and did like a quad exhaust setup that they were offering. And uh, you know, it makes it look a little more muscle car-y, a little more super car -y to actually see the exhaust pipe. So totally up to you. Again, you know, mention in the comments, see which one you like better. Uh, but while we're back here, let's take a look at the trunk. So to open the trunk, there is a little button here off to the side. It's kind of hidden in, you know, the tail light, but it's nice because then it keeps this area nice and open. So once we press that, you'll see in the convertible, there isn't a ton of space here. now. It's still a trunk and you can still put some things in there. Uh, right now, this is the wind deflector that actually clips in over top of that rear seat. Um, and you know, the typical user manuals, meta kit, stuff like that. So not a ton of space back here, but there is still a trunk. And you know, at least it has a back seat, which you'll be able to see right now because the top is down. So the back seat you'll notice isn't gonna be really for people a whole lot, that's for sure. Um, this seat right now is right up against it, so is the passenger seat, but you could at least put stuff there. When the, the, the wind deflector is on, it does clip in right here and it covers this whole area. Um, however, you could still put a few things here, probably maybe some golf clubs or backpack or luggage if you had to. If, uh, if it wouldn't fit in the back, you could use these rear seats for it. Uh, rumor has it that the fact that the seats are there makes it not a true two-seater, which for insurance reasons and other restrictions makes it a little bit easier. I don't know if that's the truth, it's just something I heard one time and it kind of made sense to me, so I do mention it. Now this one has the gorgeous brown interior, and as we're outside looking in with the top down, you can really see how, how warm that color is and how much of the interior it covers. You don't see a whole lot of black. I mean, we have a few little accents here and there, and some switches that are, you know, brushed aluminum and things like that. But for the most part, it's all very uniformly colored, which I really like. Um, now, when you enter the vehicle, you notice the doors are nice, big and heavy, uh, just like a, a coupe should be. We have, you know, a floating door handle here. Um, but other than that, the door panels are not, you know, the main attraction here. The rest of the interior is. So once you're in the inside of the LC, you'll notice it's very spacious. We have lots of high-end materials. Everywhere you look, it's either, you know, polished aluminum, brushed aluminum, soft, you know, a softer leather type material. Um, there's the floating door handles on the door panel, which I really like. 
I don't like too much going on there. So it is really easy to grab and feels, again, very high quality. Also, I always think it's important when you have a fast car to have a handle here as well. And this one does have it for the passenger or for the driver. And that's a nice touch to see in a true coupe design. So as we look at the center here, we do have the Lexus interface uh, touchpad. Now above that, we have some controls for the radio, the volume, tune, media, all that stuff. I really like the placement of that because when I'm driving, I can just rest my hand here and get used to the, the dexterity of all of that and not be as distracted as trying to look up here while I do it. It's more about feel instead of look. So I really like that. I think that won't go away, especially because you know everything you touch here is aluminum and higher quality. So that's nice too. In front of that, we have a cup holder there and then a cup holder back here as well. And this center opens up a little bit just from the one side to store perhaps your cell phone because there really isn't anything else to put your cell phone in. The reason that is important to mention, sometimes with cars, they'll have a cell phone holder. And that's great for a couple years, but as the last five years have gone, in my opinion, a lot of cell phones got bigger. And as soon as you get in one of those cars and you see how small the cell phone holder is and your phone doesn't fit there anymore, it makes the car seem a little bit outdated, in my opinion anyway. So having it in here, I think it's totally fine. Then it also gets rid of any distraction. With that armrest, when you go to shut it, it slows down at the end there. So it starts off normal speed and then slows down towards the end. The reason for that is said that it's supposed to be a homage to Omotenashi. Uh, which is a Japanese phrase, but also, you know, it talks about the tea ceremony in Japanese culture. And in the tea ceremony in Japanese culture, as you shut the door, what you do is as, you, as you're getting to the closed part of the door, as you're swinging that door shut, it slows down to be that last final click. And Lexus hides that homage in a lot of their cars. It's even when you roll up the windows on for something like an RX or probably this LC, it starts off normal speed and then slows down right as it gets to the top for a very classy finish to, uh, to that motion. So I always like to point that out. Uh, there is this hidden little panel here, which is to roll down all the windows, but also control the soft top. So when opening and closing the soft top, Lexus, when they first launched this car, that was a selling feature they would talk about is how fast that motion occurs and also how you can be driving, I think up to like 40 kilometers an hour, 50 kilometers an hour, something like that. Uh, but before I finish off this section, we're gonna do the Canadian test of does your Tim Hortons coffee fit in the cup holder? So an extra large, it's tight and you wouldn't be able to put a CD in or take a CD out, but it does, it does fit there. It doesn't block any of the climate control or anything like that. So you could have your Tim Hortons cup in your LC convertible, if you wish, if you want to. Uh, but anyway, over to the glove box. So over here, we do have the little button to open the glove box. I think it's really classy. Uh, that's a little detail that Lexus definitely could have cheaped out on, but didn't. And it's those little things I think that help cars hold value and stay relevant and stuff like that. Uh, they could have just put a plastic switch underneath or something, but uh, they did decide to have it electronically operated by an aluminum switch that matches kind of an aluminum panel here. Uh, right above that, we have the Lexus clock, which is a classic. It is a more modern clock in this one where, you know, it is backlit, there is a back to it uh, with design. But to the right of that, we have a little bit of artwork there, which is nice. So it's a little bit lit from underneath. It is the Lexus kind of emblem artwork that we've seen in a little a few other places around the car. It's nice because in front of the passenger, a lot of times manufacturers don't care what's in front of them. Sometimes it's like cheap plastic, sometimes it's just nothingness. Even though this isn't an artwork that you're gonna sit at and contemplate life, it is kind of you know comfortable to look at, I would say. So that's a nice little detail as well. Um, we just have a couple normal vents facing the passenger, but on the passenger door, it is different than the driver door. And what is different is there's an actual handle there. So it's very similar to the handle in the center. There is, you know, some substance there. My theory on that is because of that spirited driving, just like the reason why this one is here. And, you know, if you're whipping around corners at a higher speed, that gives the passenger something to hold on to, which is nice. Other than that, on the interior, we have some, you know, nice Alcantara above the gauge cluster, which by the way, 
is an LFA inspired TFT display. So you can move over mechanically that motion as you've seen in other Lexus vehicles, open up, you know, things like G-force meters, stuff like that. And all the drive modes are what's called driver and control. So, you know, you don't have to reach down and look, you can see it in your field of view when you're driving, switch it from sport plus, sport, normal, comfort, custom, all the different drive modes. So it's nice to have a little bit of diversity there as well. But overall, the interior, it does have some modern things, uh, but most of it I would say is timeless with you know the materials, the layout, stuff like that. The only thing I could see perhaps going outdated is things like the screen, but to most buyers, especially when you're buying a car of this caliper, you're not usually buying it for the screen. It's more of the combination of everything added up so if the only thing that's gonna be outdated, just like our cell phones in five to six years is, uh, is your screen, I don't think that's the end of the world. So is the LC still relevant in 2023? And the answer to the question of the real reason why you should buy one, and it's a grim one. The real reason you should buy one of these cars, whether it's new or used, is the fact that I don't know how long they're gonna make them for. And I also don't know how long they're gonna make the five liter V8. In a world of full electric and hybrid and four cylinders paired with hybrid and turbocharged engines, this is a true naturally aspirated V8 with a flat plane crank. And I don't know how many of those are even made by manufacturers anymore. So if I was you and I might myself get my hands on an LC500 with the V8, convertible or not, and uh, have the last of perhaps the era of V8s. So thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section if the LC is still relevant in 2023 and let us know if there's any videos that you want to, uh, to see in the future. Remember, we are a real car dealership here in St. Catharines and part of the Performance Auto Group. And thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.